Thank you everyone for joining us for our first ever Youth Bioscience Summit. Hello, hello, hello. So to kick us off, we're gonna have a video to share with you about the bioscience field right here in Los Angeles County. So on that note, let us please begin the video. Five years ago, the Board of Supervisors adopted a countywide economic development strategy focused on community revitalization and key growth industries for new jobs. Bioscience was identified by the board as a major growth industry and priority was given to creating a diversified workforce pipeline for youth interested in careers in the life sciences. We created BioFlex, a pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship program. BioFlex is an employer-driven system which will provide the next generation of bioscience students an opportunity to thrive in that industry. It's a career pathway program that will allow students to get on the job training as well as educational information through a curriculum. BioFlex is hands-on. Um, you're really applying your knowledge. You learn about it in high school, like the basics of compounds and all the elements, but you don't get to see it put to work until you join the BioFlex program. I learned the value of job readiness and explored the intersections of business, chemistry, and biology. I'm now pursuing a degree in biology at Loyola Marymount University. Bioscience and life sciences in Los Angeles is a diverse set of industries from, from biotech to med tech, med devices to digital health, from agriculture to aerospace, media tech, and just general high tech. What's even more exciting here is that we are building a very growing, an amazingly diverse, inclusive ecosystem connecting all the dots. Los Angeles County offers paid summer opportunities for youth between the ages of 14 to 24. This is a great way for youth to learn new skills. Hi, I'm Jessica Grondon. I'm the laboratory manager at Biolabs LA at the Lundquist Institute. Biolabs LA is an incubator that gives rental space to startups in bioscience so they can grow their company. What we're seeing that's so exciting as it relates to bioscience in LA is the expanding investment landscape. You can be an engineer, you can be an innovator, you can be a business person at a technology company. The possibilities are really endless, so you want to explore early what you think you might be interested in and and then go from there. My name is Michael Brink. I chair the BioFlex Advisory Committee and continue to strive for ways to diversify and create opportunities for young adults to get involved in the life science field. Our Torrance site will allow students the opportunity to see the manufacturing side of the industry in a meaningful way. My name is Cesar Juarez. I definitely knew I wanted to go into science as a child. Um, specifically biology. My dad uh, used to watch a lot of Discovery Channel, National Geographic, and that kind of just led me down the path of wanting to learn about uh, wildlife, general biology. The BioFlex program showed me how important it is to have a knowledgeable workforce prepared to meet demand in the marketplace. And I now am proud to say that I work at ProBB Inc., a laboratory in Santa Monica, California. For youth interested in taking advantage of this opportunity, please use the provided link. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it gave you some insight to the, the diversity of opportunities that we have here in this career field. So once again, my name is Aria Fulton, as you were able to see through the video. I'm a BioFlex graduate from North High, which is in Torrance, California, and I'm now a freshman at Loyola Marymount University, and I'm pursuing a degree in biology. I'm also on the um, cheerleading team, so I'm a collegiate cheerleader as well, so I have a nice well-rounded set of things that I do. Um, but before we begin today, I want to let you all know that we are on a Zoom meeting space. So this isn't a webinar platform, meaning we can see all of your wonderful, beautiful faces. So please make sure that you are on mute for the entire time until we get to some of our breakout sessions. And then you can always shut off your camera if you need to and use the chat box if you want to ask questions or anything like that. I'm so happy to be facilitating our program today as a graduate of BioFlex, and I really learned the value of connecting the theoretical with the practical and our hands-on training, which is what you heard me say in the video as well. So I wanna encourage you all today to take advantage of the opportunities of the STEM programs that will be presented to you today. And to begin, I wanna thank Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas and the South Bay Work Investment Board for making this event happen. 
And on that note, I would like to introduce Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas, the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisor for the second district. Welcome to the Los Angeles County Youth Bioscience Summit. First, I'd like to thank the South Bay Workforce Investment Board, Bioscience LA, our partners, and all of you for making the day possible. This is a big deal. It's a great day in LA and here in LA County. We are fast emerging as a national hub for bioscience research and innovation, and that's a big deal from the beautiful new facility uh, that is home to the Lundquist Center, uh, the Lundquist Institute. And if you haven't been there, make your way to the campus of Harbor UCLA Medical Center. Uh, the plans to develop a biotech industrial park uh, there on that campus is really uh, the envy of what's happening in this industry in the Southern California community and the soon to be Bioscience LA headquarters in Culver City. Uh, the county is all in on bioscience. But to support this growth, it's not just about building capital projects and creating new infrastructure. It's much more about investing in our human capital and creating career pathway opportunities that connect students at all levels to careers in the bioscience industry. And that's why we're here today. And I'm very proud to be here with you today. That is to equip you, the next generation of bioscience leaders with the expertise, the skills, with the experience needed to thrive in bioscience. And so I am, uh, quite privileged to be here uh, and we'll take this opportunity now uh, to introduce a trailblazer in our community, Dr. Teresa Ramirez from Compton to Brown University. She continues to be a leader in her work at the American Physiological Society as a mentor and a role model. Dr. Ramirez has dedicated her heart and rolled up her sleeves to bring positive change to our most vulnerable communities. She is a leader in our fight to create more diversity in the life sciences, a fierce advocate for youth and a champion for community empowerment. May I take this opportunity now to please welcome Dr. Teresa Ramirez. Thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction. I'm going to share my screen right now. Can everybody see this? Yes. Perfect. So yeah. as it was mentioned, I am Dr. Teresa Ramirez. And today I'm going to share to you, um, with you all overcoming the odds from Compton to Brown University. So I come from a hardworking family who immigrated to this country from Mexico, Zacatecas, Mexico, to Compton. I was born in Torrance, California. So, I mean, I, was, I didn't grow up in Torrance, but I was born in Torrance. Um, but I grew up in Compton and I am very proud of my culture, of my Mexican roots. Um, as you could see, my journey has been in so many directions, not a straight path. It's been very curvy, but wherever I go, I take my culture. I'm very proud of being able to be bilingual. Um, and I grew up in Compton, so I went to Compton Public Schools. I'm not sure if some of you are aware of the schools that exist in Compton, but it's Rosecrans, Benjamin Oates Davis, Compton Senior High School, woohoo! Um, I went to Cal State Dominguez Hills, but I always knew that I wanted to obtain a higher education, regardless of where I grew up, I always knew the importance of having this higher education. So I urge you to look for opportunities to ask questions. And one of the key things that really helped me was the support of my parents, but also the support and that push that I needed for mentors. So at Cal State Dominguez Hills, I just didn't get there by, by chance. 
it all started in high school when I actually was given an opportunity to apply for a summer research program as a junior in high school. And guess where I went? I was at Charles Drew University um, doing and learning about biomedical research. At the time, I had no idea what biomedical research stand or stood for. So I was exposed to doing more of what's called like clinical research. But because I was a high school student, I didn't really get a chance to work in the research lab, but I was mostly um, given the opportunity to go to the Martin Luther King Hospital and see how some studies were ran, especially like one of the studies was focused on lead and hypertension among pregnant women. So the only thing that I got the opportunity to learn when I was a high school student was to how to pipette. And pipetting water was something that I became an expert that later on helped me throughout my career. So another thing from that opportunity, I learned about the Minority Biomedical Research Support Program at California State University, Dominguez Hills. The director and the staff member from that program said, hey, since we know that you're gonna be applying and attending Cal State Dominguez Hills, because I had told them, they said, you should contact the director of this program and you know get more research experience and just, just do it. So I took their advice and I went and I spoke to the person, but sometimes certain opportunities don't come to you when you're, when you're there and you're ready, they come at the right time. So when I went and I spoke with this person, um, the director of the program, she said, you know, you're still a freshman in college, um, come when you're a sophomore. And I said, okay, when I was a sophomore, I went again, I knocked that door. And that was the beginning of my career. I thought I was, gonna, I was going to become a medical doctor, a pediatrician, but life had other plans for me. So my advice to you is to be open to the opportunities because you never know where, you're going, where are you going to end up. And I never wanted to leave California, but look at me now. I'm actually in Rockville, Maryland in the East Coast. So one of, the, one of the things that my mentor told me in college was you have to learn how to spread your wings, so spread them out. So I am in Maryland. So you see from Cal State Dominguez Hills, I took some time off what's called, um, I did a post back program at the National Cancer Institute in Frederick, Maryland. Then after that, I went to USC and worked as a research tech, thinking that I was gonna go to med school, but then I had learned about graduate school that if you go for a PhD in the sciences, guess what? Everything's paid for. I had scholarships as an undergrad, and then I got a full ride scholarship for my PhD. So I ended up applying to schools in California, outside of California, including Brown, and guess what? I didn't get accepted to all the schools in California that I applied to, except for Stanford. They placed me on a waiting list but all the schools outside of California accepted me. So I had to make a choice. And even though my heart was saying like, oh, I wanna stay in California, I knew that if I went somewhere else, and especially a school that really wanted me there, like Brown, that was gonna open more doors, and it did. I loved it. And then from um, Brown University, I was given the opportunity to continue my research in alcohol research in the liver at the National Institutes of Health. I couldn't say no to that. So from there on, I stayed in the East Coast, um, but eventually I do wanna come back to California. And as you see, I am not doing current um, biomedical research now, but I'm working for a nonprofit where I provide opportunities, resources to students, to faculty members, you name it. So now I'm on the other side, but still using my science. So you never know where life is gonna take you. And in the sixth grade, I participated in my first science fair, not knowing that I was gonna become a scientist. What is the question? What is your hypothesis? To like really investigating that particular hypothesis. I graduated from Compton Senior High School as a celebratorian, class of 1998. I then on went to, Com to, um, to Cal State Dominguez Hills where I graduated in 2004, but I would always come back to, to Compton because I was helping students with their college 
and scholarship and financial aid applications. And I still do that. And with that mission, my parents joined me to talk to the parents about those opportunities. And then at the end, I received my PhD, which was one of the most happiest moments because it wasn't just my PhD, it was my parents' PhD as well. And one of the things that I wanna to say to you is it doesn't matter where you come from, as long as you have a dream, you're determined and you will not give up to achieve that. I am so proud of my culture. I am proud to be from Compton, yes. Straight out of Compton, which has a bad perception, but guess what? There's great things that happen from Compton too. Great people that come from Compton, and I'm one of them. And I take my science to wherever I go, and also I give talks like this about the importance of higher education. So I hope that whatever opportunity comes to you, take advantage of it, and if not, you create it. As I mentioned, um, when I graduated from Brown, which was May 25th, which I'm ne never gonna forget, I always celebrate May 25th. Uh, that's when I received my PhD. And one, one of the things that I always say is that dreams do come true. They come true because you, you first have to believe in them, but you also have to surround yourself with positive people and people who are going to champion you. People who are gonna become your allies people who are going to say, yes, you could do it, but yet can tell you the truth and say, you know, you need to improve in this. And don't take offense to it. It's just for your own benefit of becoming better. And so here, I'm a first generation Mexican American, the first in my family to obtain a PhD in the sciences. And I am a doc doctora, Dr. Teresa Ramirez. I didn't get here alone. I got here with the help of my mentors, but particularly my parents who didn't have an education, but yet always knew the importance of one. They wanted their daughter to get the best education. And I did. And one of the things here that you could see is that my mentors come from different cultural backgrounds. They're both males and females, different ages. So that's one thing you should do. Get, men get a mentor, ask for a mentor. It doesn't matter if it's a female, male, someone who's gonna be there to help you, to champion, champion you, cheer you up, but also to tell you the areas that you need to improve. And I will leave you with this quote, which is one of my favorite ones that says, um, from Dr. Seuss that says, all the places you go, it says, congratulations. Today is your day, you're off to great places. You're off on a way, your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. And when I saw this, um, the movie, I said, oh, I need to take a picture. But I'm so proud to be from Compton because that's the city I grew up. That's where the schools that I attended, and I went, and I want to make a difference. Eventually, I want to come back to California. So we'll see. And with that, thank you so much. Um, I'll leave you with this other quote that says, I do know one thing about me. I don't measure myself by others' expectations and oops, or let others define my worth by Sonia Sotomayor, which I got the chance to meet here in DC. So you never know what's gonna happen. Another thing that I forgot to mention is the importance of getting yourself involved with different organizations. Like one of the biggest organizations that I got involved with was SACNA, Society for the Advancement of Hispanic and Native Americans in Science. Now I work for the American Physiological Society. We have great resources. You never know what you can learn from these organizations and the people that you are gonna meet. So get yourself involved and don't be afraid to ask questions. If you wanna meet someone, that um, use what's called informational interviews to talk to them, to get to know them, but please find a mentor and don't give up. That is my advice to you all. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Ramirez. That was so inspiring, my fellow Torrance native. We appreciate you being here so much and we can't wait to hear us for some more for you. So I know you're gonna get a lot of emails after this panel. Yes, if there's questions, please feel free to email me. I have to go because I have another conference happening, but I'm so happy to be here, so honored. 
And if there's any way that I can help students with their college applications, or oh, just anything in regards to higher education of how did I get to where I am, I'm happy to have those informational interviews with them. Thank you. We will, we're going to be in contact with you. We appreciate you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, proud representative of Compton. I'm glad to represent Compton and you're part of the reason why. There you go. Yes. And I want to come back. I, I still, even though I'm in the East Coast, I continue to help students what from the West Coast, Mid Coast, East Coast. It doesn't matter. I have no borders and I still continue because from being from Compton, my parents still live there. And when I come home, that's home to me. You let them know. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. So at this moment, we're going to transition into our panel discussions. These discussions are going to go very quickly, so we're not going to have time for any Q&A. But at the end of this um, summit, you're going to get a resource packet with emails, phone numbers, programs of all that we have talked about today. So I encourage you to reach out to the panelists, okay? So this first panel is called Pathways into STEM, and you're gonna hear about the different educational programs and college tracks to prepare you for a degree in life sciences. And with that, I will ask our wonderful moderator, Laura Bischoff, to introduce herself and the panel. Thank you. Thank you, Arya. Good afternoon. My name is Laura Bischoff, and I work at the South Bay Workforce Investment Board. I'd first like to thank Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas and his staff, especially Carmen Guzzi, for all of their hard work putting together this great event, and thank all of you for attending and welcome you to the panel. As you saw in the video at the beginning, the BioFlex pre-apprenticeship program was developed to help bridge the gap between students who are asking, what are my next steps now that I finished school or how can I get a good job and employers looking for these skilled individuals. The program started thanks largely to the funding provided by Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas and has successfully graduated over 75 individuals, including Ms. Fulton, and 25 individuals are currently enrolled. We are excited to offer it throughout LA County for employers seeking students like you to fill their future pipeline. In addition, BioFlex offers state and nationally recognized apprenticeships in specialized bioscience occupations, giving students an earn and learn way to build skills while being employed. We hope that this panel helps you gain information and offers opportunities from these exciting organizations in the bioscience sector. I would now like to introduce Dr. Terry Quinzer, the statewide director of life sciences, Biotech California Community Colleges. Thank you for this introduction and thank you for inviting me to serve on this panel. I'm really excited to talk to all of you and um, to share some interesting resources from the community colleges. I represent the Life Sciences and Biotech uh, Initiative for the California Community Colleges and uh, just want you to know a few things about that. First of all, um, I'm excited that you're here on this, this webinar today because there's so much great information and you know, if, if you have any doubt about biotech, um, there, there's a lot of reasons you should get into biotech. Um, first of all, uh, your generation is so passionate about wanting to change the world and biotechnology can help us do that, or biotech. And as most of you know, biotech is going to get us out of this pandemic that we're in the middle of uh, with the diagnostics, in fact, there's a new one out that can tell the difference between whether you have COVID or just the common flu. Uh, as you know, there are a lot of vaccines uh, that are being tested right now in clinical trials. So we'll soon have a way to prevent the spread of coronavirus. And of course, biotech is gonna bring about a treatment. So it's an exciting field. And most people think of the field in terms of medicine but there's other areas, it's not just medicine and, and pharmaceuticals. Uh, biotech is also used in agriculture and in food production. In fact, uh, testing keeps our food safe. And did you know that there's a new trend in the industry to grow tissue, meat tissue from cells, which can help with the environment and by preventing the need for as many animals and uh, it can prevent topsoil erosion and greenhouse gases and such, and it can also be used to clean the environment, um, and, and as well as other things. So there's a lot of reasons to go into biotechnology. And 
why would you consider going to the community colleges? Why wouldn't you want to just go straight on into a four-year college? And there are some great reasons for going to community college first. And by the way, Compton College is starting a new biotech program. So, um, but the, one of the main things uh, is the hands-on skills that you can get in the community colleges which you often don't get as much opportunity for that in the four-year colleges and quite a few, in fact, statewide, about 20% of the students in community colleges have their bachelor's degrees and did not get the skills they need to get a good job. So they come back to the community colleges to get those skills. So why not start out getting those skills and then you can transfer to the four-year colleges and and you can have a great experience or you can go to work. You have a lot of options by going to the community colleges first. And who am I talking about? Jo you know, going to the community colleges and getting into biotech? I'm talking to you, those of you that are sitting here watching this webinar right now, because it, it's not as hard as you might think. You, you do not need to have AP biotechnology courses in high school to get into the biotech programs in the community colleges. Uh, and the math that you'll learn is mostly applied. It's not hard. It does take practice, but it's not hard and you can do it. And once you complete a certificate as, in as, with as little as one certificate, um, maybe even a full, or I'm sorry, one course or a full certificate program, you can, be eligible to get a job in the industry. And there are great jobs with a lot of upward mobility opportunities. Uh, or you can transfer to a four-year university and get your bachelor's degree and go from there. And so there's a lot of opportunities. And I just want to share, um, there's opportunities uh, for to go to college even free. There's the California Promise Program. And uh, if you qualify, then you get your first two years of college at community college completely free. And uh, with scholarships, you can transfer and get uh, assistance going on to a four-year degree as well. So uh, you can apply uh, online for the federal application project, the FAFSA, and uh, the packet that you're getting today will have information about that. And if you want to find out about the Promise programs at the community college that you're interested in, all you have to do is Google the name of your, the community college and Promise program. And you'll get all kinds of information about how, how to qualify and how to apply. But it's an opportunity to go to college the first two years completely free and it's wonderful. And there's also scholarship opportunities, but I'm going to stop so that we can, I can share the time with the other panelists. Thank you all so right. much. I just wanted to let you all know that we will have to end this panel at 140, okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me introduce Dr. Victoria Fox from Pathways to Stem Cell Science. Um, is there something specific that you would like me to talk about, just generally what we do at Pathways? Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. I think about your program okay. would be great. Um, so um, my name is Victoria Fox. I'm the Executive Director of Pathways to Stem Cell Science. Um, we are a, a unique organization um, that actually started at USC. So I was a faculty member at USC and the director of a laboratory there called the Stem Cell Core. And this facility was responsible for providing um, training, technical assistance, and facilities and equipment to support stem cell research, not only on the USC campus, but throughout the greater LA area. Um, and the, the lab grew in size, particularly the training component, grew from um, professional training, to include college training and then high school training and it kind of grew and grew and grew to the point that it became its own entity <coughs> which we spun out of USC in 2016. 
So at this moment in 2020, we have our own facility in Torrance, California that we just opened in March of this year. It's a 4,000 square foot facility. Um, we have continued in the tradition of the USC lab offering um, research space for companies. We have three companies housed with us. We also have dedicated teaching labs, which I think were probably one of the only organizations outside of the university to do that. And our programs start in kindergarten, actually, and they go all the way up to professional scientists. So we have kindergartners who come and learn in the lab in the same space as the professional scientists. The cool thing about it is the education is juxtaposed to the research that is going on. So we are also a contract research organization. We conduct research on behalf of other scientists and companies. And the students get to see that firsthand as they're in their programs um, learning. And we also have a student from the BioFlex program with us this year, in, a, in addition to students through the programs that we run ourselves. Is that enough? <laughs> Great, thank you very much, Dr. Fox. Um, I would now like to introduce Dr. John Lee Tunstall from the Academic Advancement Program at UCLA. Hello, it's great to be with you all today. I'm, I'm the director of our pre-college and summer programs within the Academic Advancement Program at UCLA. And within the Academic Advancement Program, which I'll refer to as AAP from here on out since it's a mouthful, um, we have two outreach programs that really work with both high school and community college students. Our one program, VIP Scholar Services, students at 10 different schools within LA, many of which are represented today. We have Crenshaw, Dorsey, Hamilton, Laces, Westchester, King Drew, and then three schools within Pasadena. We have undergraduate mentors who are UCLA students who went to these same schools who are now working at the schools physically when we were able to do so, but now we're providing virtual mentoring and college advising really focused on making sure that students are competitive for the college and university of their choice by the time you are applying your senior year. And then also doing a series of residential summer programs on the campus of UCLA where students earn college credit during that time. They engage in a social justice oriented, culturally relevant curriculum during their time in the program, as well as Saturday academies that are available for both students and their parents or guardians. And then our second program is again, another mouthful, CCCP, which is the Center for Community College Partners partnerships, does very similar work that I mentioned with VIP scholars in that there are undergraduate students who were former transfer students themselves that are again working at the community college, supporting students in being able to navigate and access the university. They also have several different summer programs for students on the campus of UCLA. They have a series of either weekend or week-long programs focusing on either different cultural groups and cultural basis or focusing specifically on the STEM field. Um, in the resource guide that you will receive later, it has information on both VIP scholars as well as CCCP. You can also ask your high school or your community college about the program and how to best access the mentors that are available for your school site. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes the panel. Thank you, you guys. The amazement just keeps going. I am so excited. Thank you to each one of you for speaking with us today. And I really encourage you students that are on here to talk to your college counselors at your schools because they can also further get you connected with all these people who are here today, all right? Um, so Aria? now- Aria, Yeah, sorry. There's a bit of time for a couple of questions in case people have some for these panelists. Okay. That would be great. Um, if you'd like to answer a question, could you please type it in the chat? Type your, like type a thumbs up and I will let you ask your question. All right, well, how about I ask a question for the group then? Um, I would like to ask my question to our VIP scholars with UCLA. And that's obviously a very popular college and a, it would be great to have students have research opportunities there. How would they best do that? 
So there are a couple of ways so through our website is a great way now to be able to learn more about our program. Um, there's also being able to email our office. Um, from there, someone will respond to that email, letting you know how to best get involved right now um, and how we can best support you, answer questions, or even connect you with other departments on campus that you may be interested in as well, even if they don't directly come out of our office. And I'll put our both email and our website in the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much. So just so you know, there is going to be a resource page that will be sent out with the links and everyone's contact information at the end of this. And we have another question in the chat. Um, you, so you mentioned specific high schools, um, the 10 and then also the ones in Pasadena. Can other high schools receive mentors? Shout out to my Torrance high schools. Are they able to do that as well? Yes, they can. So we have a virtual mentor that specifically supports students that may not go to one of our partnering high schools. Um, typically, also when we're in person, we are able to set up um, buddy days. So that's our visits to the campus where a student is able to shadow someone in their major. And that could be to a really interesting class or to a really boring class, but just to give them an idea of what it means or the experience of being a UCLA student in this particular field. And that is also open to students who don't go to our partner high schools as well. Thank you so much. And I have another question in the chat. People are wondering how has COVID affected hands-on learning? So I don't know if Dr. Fox would like to touch on this since Torrance does have a new um, lab um, with which is research for students starting at kindergarten. So you wanna to touch on that question? Yeah, we just run our programs as normal, to be honest, um, because children or schools are not really playing a big role in driving COVID. So we didn't see any scientific or public health reason not to continue offering our programs. So they just ran as normal. Our class sizes are small, 10 students. Um, so for us personally, it has not affected us. I can speak to the community colleges and how those have been affected. Um, most of them have gone to a hybrid method of teaching and for the hands-on classes, they're doing a combination of simulations. And uh, in some cases, they're actually opening up the labs on campuses for the essential courses. So some students do get to come on campus and practice social distancing uh, as while they're doing their labs. So they're having smaller classes and such. And in some cases, some of the colleges have made kits that they're sending home to their students. And uh, also in some cases, they're sending home microscopes. So for microbiology, they're getting to do their experiments at home. So it's, it's a combination of those three, those three ways. Thank you, thank you. And I can definitely attest to those hands-on learning. I'm still getting hands-on learning in my college biology lab. And so we're gonna keep moving forward, all right? Thank you. Um, so I now want to ask our moderator, David Wayland, to introduce himself and the next panel. Terrific. Thank you so much, Ari. I uh, uh, really appreciate it. Uh, very honored to be here. I'm, I'm Dave Whalen, the CEO of Bioscience LA, which uh, the supervisor mentioned earlier is a uh, independent nonprofit organization that's growing the, the profile and really the innovation capacity for life sciences, biotech, health tech here in the greater LA region. And a lot of that really touches on people strategy. So we're building programs around recruiting, training, development, retention. And so uh, very excited to have this, this panel that's going to talk about the paths they've taken post, uh, post school, uh, beyond the classroom to get into the industry. And so I just want to dive in uh, with, with the group. Uh, let's start with uh, with Deborah Hamill, who is a, a senior QA associate at uh, Tanvex Biopharma. And Deborah would love for you to just tell us a bit about how you got into the role that you're in. You've had a really great path, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, um, I've been at a, this biologics company now for a year and a half. And I made a transition out of education. So I had been teaching um, mostly chemistry and then some math for like 20 years. But prior to that, I actually had been a chemist for 10 years at a contract laboratory. So moving down here in San Diego now was when I wanted to make this transition. And it was really challenging. 
Um, I had to learn a lot about the different positions um, that were similar and how they were different to what I did previously and identify my strengths and the value that I could bring to companies and really get some help, uh, you know, updating my resume and, and uh, it really took networking and starting with uh, women in biology, which I'm a member of and meeting people that made good contacts for me so that I could, uh, uh, you know, get that foot in the door. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. And we'll talk a bit more about women in, women in bio in a, in a little bit uh, for sure. Uh, so uh, Travis Jones uh, from Intuitive Biotechnologies, who uh, Travis, you've uh, actually been part of some of the programs that we were talking about earlier today and would love to have you share a bit of your story around that. Yeah, so uh, my name's uh, Travis Jones. Um, I have kind of have an interesting story. Um, I'm from Pasadena, I went to Pasadena High School. I uh, ended up going to Humboldt State University. And after I finished college, I realized that I didn't necessarily have the specific skills I needed to get a job. Um, and it was really difficult to find a, a, a job that would hire me straight out of college. So um, I found Pasadena Bioscience Collaborative um, online, reached out to Wendy Johnston and um, did a, a weekend workshop where they basically uh, go through basic technical skills, um, pouring uh, gels, um, running gels, and through that, um, I got an internship with my first startup, uh, Verix. Um, it's an interesting experience because if you go through a startup route, you actually wear many hats. You learn different skills that you don't necessarily get if you were to go straight the academic route. Um, and so I've been at two startups here at Pasadena Bioscience Collaborative. I'm currently a project leader at Intuitive Biotechnologies. And um, I, I honestly advise anyone to look into startups. If you see anything interesting, reach out to the, the executives there, reach out to technicians there and try and get some information on how you can get involved and how you can get opportunities. Terrific, thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, Pasadena has been uh, such a great, uh, great organization that I think uh, you know, you're, you're not alone in individuals who've gone through programs, access to startups. It's, it's a great resource for the region. So I'm glad to, glad to hear your story. Uh, I wanna introduce uh, uh, Nicole uh, Wisman, who is a uh, recruiter, CEO, premier placement recruiting, but also working closely with uh, companies like A2 Biotherapeutics, and then uh, she's the vice chair as well of Young Women in Bio. Uh, so Nicole, if you could share a bit about your recruiting background, but also your, your women in bio experience. Nicole, are you out there or did we lose you? All right. Well, if Nicole, uh, Nicole, if you are out there, we can uh, we can get you to uh, uh, introduce yourself in a moment. Um, can you hear me now? Sorry. Oh, yeah. There you are. Perfect. All right. I think I muted myself on my phone. So, I actually started out in financial services, and then I parlayed my career to catch over to um, medical device and worked with ResMed and was able to build a whole software development team of 135 software developers. Um, where I really started to find my passion for science, technology, engineering, and math. And then um, wound up deciding after working in corporate America and ramping companies up in life sciences quite a bit, I decided I would start my own startup. And so launched my own recruiting firm and then helped all of these startups throughout Southern California and San Diego. And then on a whim moved to Los Angeles last year and with the help of Women in Bio and Young Women in Bio behind me, launched our first cohorts up here in Los Angeles and have been networking and supporting A2 and other companies in the LA area as they're growing. And I'm super excited to meet everybody on the call today and showcase opportunities because LA is growing and it's such an exciting time to be in LA. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I, I, lo I love hearing stories of people coming to LA because of the opportunity here and helping to create it. We really are at the, the beginning or early stages of some great growth here, which is terrific for all of us, uh, you know, on these panels, but also really terrific for everyone who's attending because the, the opportunities are, are limitless. And uh, uh, with that, uh, Joel Espejo, uh, um, head of HR, U.S. head of HR for Polypeptide Group, which is one of the, 
the, the larger uh, biotech uh, life sciences companies here in LA would love to have you share a bit of your story and, and the recruiting you're doing right now. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Uh, Polypeptide is a contract manufacturing organization. Uh, we have six uh, different locations across the globe. We have one in India. We have two in the US here in Torrance and, and San Diego. Uh, Torrance is where my office is. We have uh, three in Europe. Um, we manufacture a uh, therapeutic peptide uh, which uh, could be applied uh, both at the uh, pharmaceutical industry or a research uh, industry. Uh, very quickly, um, uh, as a uh, recruiter for uh, more than 15 years now, um, you know, you get into uh, reviewing uh, a lot of resumes here and there from entry level all the way to the executive level. And I had the pleasure of recruiting the, the president uh, of the company. But let me dive down to uh, the most um, entry level position that I have recruited for, because that's the, I think that was the, uh, the instruction that I give it, uh, that was given to me. So, um, in a resume, this is what I'm looking for, a, a well-written and organized resume, which gives um, a positive uh, impression about the applicant. Uh, when I talk about a, a well-prepared resume would include the following, a clear, uh, a, a goal that clearly conveys your desired direction aligned to the job that you're applying for, um, activities and initiatives that you have done to support your goals, your qualities as an individual that makes you an ideal candidate for the position. And I know this is very important for our students that are in the group to have some kind of, of an idea of how should I write my resume, knowing that I don't have a lot of industry experience. And trust me and believe me, all of us in the room right now, we were in your position. And I'm glad that uh, LA County is doing this uh, this summit to help our 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 future. Uh, you 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 guys, and of course your academic um, background uh, that serves as the foundation of your knowledge, skills, and abilities. And let alone highlight your qualities as an individual that makes you an ideal candidate for the position. Like you're assertive, you're reliable, adaptable, dedicated, flexible, you're organized, self-confidence. These are the things that you would not learn from schools, but this is something that you can bring in, in the table knowing that you have a limited experience. Um, how do you go after entry-level jobs? I don't know if I still have uh, some time. You can participate in these co-op programs, which are very important. Um, all of us in the biotech pharma, at some point in time, will be uh, looking into how can we partner, uh, how can we develop partnership with these uh, different programs. Um, we know that it would be very challenging in the future to hire just college graduates to join us uh, working in our, our laboratories. But having a, um, a program that will uh, be focused on training you guys to get into the lab. It's, it's one of the best programs uh, that I've seen. And so uh, as a biotech uh, pharma company in the uh, local LA area, uh, we are continuously um, having a discussion on how to um, uh, feed our pipeline with individuals coming out from the, the high school uh, and entering uh, into these special programs that can help us uh, feed the pipeline. So um, congratulations for, for if you guys are in that program and, and you're planning to go into, uh, into that program, uh, go for it. Terrific. Thank you, Joel. And uh, yeah, po polypeptide has been a great, uh, great part of the community in terms of, uh, in terms of training and, and recruiting. And so uh, we're, we're excited to continue to help, help see growth there and uh, have you be part of the growth of the whole, the whole region. Um, so I want to, you know, circle back to a, a few, you know, a few other questions and we'll see if we can get uh, everyone else to, to, to weigh in a little bit, uh, a little bit as, as well. Um, and uh, Nicole, I wanted to, to jump back to you uh, briefly and you mentioned you know, you've just moved to LA, uh, you're, you're working with uh, women in bio, young women in bio. Um, 
you know, thinking about building a strong network that will open up job opportunities, what, what can students do, uh, you know, even at a, a young age to start building that network that will position them for, for jobs in the future? So anyone on this call, I, I'm going to give you my cell phone number, 619-817-1415. If you need help, I'll help you, however. Um, I think it's really important for you guys to network with each other. So group chat, we have young women in bio, so we have girls ages 12 and up, and we welcome all students, boys, girls, everyone is welcome. We are inclusive. We want everyone to have an opportunity to learn about science, technology, engineering, and math. I think it is so important for everyone to go out and meet their neighbor. It sounds ridiculous, but most people don't even know who lives next door to them, especially in LA. So. I've been meeting my neighbors, and what we found is we've been doing lots of Zoom videos. And so if you look at all of these activities, um, you can go on to Instagram, you can go on to Twitter, you can go on to YouTube. If you wanna find ways to network, you can go on to Instagram. If you wanna find ways to learn about science, technology, engineering, and math, look at YouTube videos. But I really think it's important for you to chat with your friends, get involved with groups at school, any extracurriculars, and just, even ask your teachers, whoever can get you to meet someone and then start sharing ideas and start talking about what you want to do when you grow up. We don't know what we want to be. We still are figuring it out, me included. So use your YouTube videos. I don't know if I've gone off on too far of a tangent, Dave, you can bring me back. No, that's, that's terrific. And yeah, actually it's a good, good segue because uh, I think what, what I find really interesting about this whole panel, myself included, is that, uh, you know, we're, we're all doing really different things than we were doing earlier in our careers. And, uh, you know, I, I just came on as the, the head of Bioscience LA. And, um, you know, that's a, that's a new direction from what I was doing five years ago and def definitely from what I was doing 25 years ago. And so it, it's all about continuous learning. And actually, I thought that might be a good uh, opening for, uh, for, for Deborah just to weigh in because, you know, you, you had, an, you know, a complete career in education, uh, or, you know, in, in science and education, and, and now you're back in quality assurance. How do you help build a story that gets recruiters like Nicole or, uh, you know, recruiters like Joel excited to uh, bring you into a new job? Debbie, we worked on this together. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, Nicole definitely I, agree. I, I love her to bits, so, but you, you tell the story. A little collusion. I like that. This is good. Yeah, so she was a great resource, you know, and sometimes you have to do that. You have to, you know, reach out and get some help. And she was able to look at my previous resume, my work um, from when I was a, at a contract lab as an analytical chemist and um, how to use those strengths and abilities. And she being so familiar with the biotech industry because I was not, you know, she knew about positions and, you know, things that they were looking for. And so how can I take my quality assurance experience from, you know, working basically in the EPA environment and switching over to the life sciences, the biotech. And, you know, it took somebody yeah. too that, that understood that as well. So, you know, I was able to pass my resume from a friend that I met from women in biology onto a director here at this company. And he took a look at it and, you know, he was able to see also where I would be a good fit, you know, the strengths that I could bring. So it's figuring out those transferable skills you know, because there, there are common sets, you know, yeah. I'm going to say this because I think Debbie's not going to say this. So Debbie is a, someone who flawlessly executes. And so I had to teach her how to showcase her talents and say, listen, I'm brilliant. I've been brilliant. I've proven myself. I've been in exceeds expectations on my annual review. I can do all of these things. You need people like me. Sure, I need this training, but I'm brilliant. I can figure it out. And so once she was armed with that confidence, and she ha knew she had the skills. She just needed to be around someone who was smart enough to give her a chance. And I think LA is really great about being smart enough to give every single person a chance. And I'm going to say this. I would like every single person on this call to reach out to one person on this call. And, and someone should facilitate an introduction to put you in touch with someone that can help you. Because we will only build a neighborhood and build and get to know our neighbors by doing this. And it's up to us. We must make the difference. That's all I'm going to say. Love you, Deb. Nicole, thank you. That was, that was terrific. And uh, um, I think a great, you know, great, as we kind of get toward the, the end here, one question I have, because we've talked a lot about BioFlex program, which is tremendous. Um, 
uh, you know, Pasadena, the, the work going on there. Would love to get a sense, uh, maybe Joel, uh, you know, maybe Travis as well, as you look at the larger companies as well as smaller companies, what sorts of opportunities are there for more non-technical positions or, you know, are there, uh, you know, are there paths to take when someone is, uh, you know, not necessarily a scientist, still figuring out, do they want to be a scientist or maybe, you know, want to be involved in another, another field within the, the industry? Uh, I, I can go. Um, you know, in, in the biotech pharma, as, is, as a full service facility, you have a lot of opportunities to go into. But I'd like to uh, kind of piggyback on what Nicole said um, about uh, you as, as a, a newcomer in the industry. You have to have that high level of confidence. Speak about what you can bring into the table. Don't worry about not that you have all that experience that employers will be looking for. Not everyone will have that level of experience, but bring yourself on the table and talk about what you can do for them vis-a-vis -vis what it's gonna come back to you as an individual. But again, on the entry level jobs, there's a lot of jobs that are out there starting from a um, production technician or a QA technician on the admin side as a, uh, an entry level uh, clerk. So there's a lot of opportunities out there, but you're gonna have to figure out how to package yourself and get your foot in the door. Networking, networking, repackaging and reinventing yourself has to be a 360 uh, degrees uh, work for you. You have to constantly be working on that. You cannot stop up until you get where you want to be. And I, I completely agree with that. I think uh, another good um, opportunity is when, um, at least for me with startups, you wear a lot of hats and you end up doing things you never thought you would do. Um, I actually ended up doing a lot of accounting work, um, bookkeeping, things like that. And so it's there are skills that you may not think are relevant to a company until you ask them what they need. Um, sometimes companies don't even know what they what they need. Uh, a lot of people who start companies have PhDs, postdocs. They've been in academia for 10, 15 years, and they don't really have a, a business sense. Um, sometimes just going to them with some business ideas, marketing ideas, can actually help them and actually create a position for yourself to excel. There's also uh, opportunities in law. I think that's one thing that people don't uh, talk about as much, but lawyers are a huge, huge part of uh, what we do, um, patent lawyers and, and all this. So there's opportunities that surround biotech from every angle. And uh, it, it's really just about immersing yourself and, and looking for those opportunities, talking to people, asking questions. People have done what you're trying to do before. And if they haven't, then you're gonna uh, create a path for people um, after you. Yeah, terrific. Thank you, Travis. That's a great, great, you know, great way to round this out. And I think the, the real message here is uh, life sciences, biotech, just, you know, health technologies in general. It is an incredibly growing field. It is growing very rapidly in Los Angeles. Uh, not that anyone has, uh, you know, uh, doubted this industry, but if you look at the past six months, clearly there is a uh, a, a huge need for health technologies to, uh, you know, not just keep the economy going, but but keep us, you know, keep us healthy, keep us safe. That's not going away at all. Um, the opportunities that uh, um, I think Terry had mentioned earlier about, uh, you know, biomanufacturing and uh, you know, new materials and. Uh, uh, you know, food products, agriculture, really life sciences, biotech connects to all of it. And so there are massive opportunities here. Uh, we're, we're so excited to share this with you today. Um, feel free to reach out to me as well at Bioscience LA. My information will be in the, um, you know, the materials as well. Um, and with that, I want to turn things over to uh, Aria to kind of uh, transition us to uh, some awesome breakout sessions. Well, 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 again, another mind-blowing panel. I hope you took away from this panel that there are opportunities for the bioscience field from all different avenues and not just technical scientists, but you can be a lawyer, you could be a marketing, you could be an attorney. There's so many things. So just please keep your eyes open and be able to spread your rings like Dr. Ramirez told us earlier. Okay. PVC and uh, he showed me electron microscopy, one of my, my favorite things, uh, showed me some images. So 
Um, as far as all of you students that are out there, sometimes if you just see someone doing something cool, you happen to be around them, just walk up to them, talk to them. You'd be surprised how, how much knowledge you'll get from that and uh, how easy it is. Um, as far as networking, one of the things I can recommend is find a mentor and go with them to poster presentations, go with them to um, meetings if they let you in, go talk to sales reps. Um, all, all these different things will get you further um, and just keeping your mouth shut and you know staying home isn't going to do much. So you just got to put yourself out there and uh, you guys have, have all done an amazing job. So thank you. Thank you so much, Travis, for the words of wisdom. Well, I truly hope you all enjoyed your breakout session, but most of all, I truly hope you joined our summit today. I hope you're craving more knowledge. And if you're confused by any of the terms we use today, consider studying science in the community college at university because you're going to learn all of these and they're going to come to you pretty quickly. So thank you just so much for bringing all your time. I want to give a round of applause to all of our panelists here. If you guys can show them some love in the chat or show them some reactions on your thing, they would love to see that you enjoyed their presentation today. Just a reminder, there will be a follow-up email going out with a resource um, contact sheet about everything that you heard today. All right, you're also going to get a survey at the end of this meeting. So if you could please immediately go fill out the survey because you're going to remember what questions you had. Give us feedback. If you want another summit, you let us know. Um, we want to give the best back to our community and to our high school students, to our college students, to anyone that's here today. Um, we just thank you so much for being here today. And we want you guys to be recognized and we want our students to um, get some connections. So students make those connections today, OK? Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend and afternoon. It was such a pleasure um, meeting with all of you today. Um, if you want to hear from more from me, you can find me here um, on Instagram or on LinkedIn. Um, there you go. And this concludes our wonderful first summit ever. Yay! Lo lovely. Thank you to the supervisor again. Thank you to Carmen for putting this together. She hasn't introduced herself, but thank you so much. And with that, this concludes the summit. Congratulations.